The biggest problem with this code is that it embeds database connectivity inside of the REST API call. The correct pattern is to connect to the database, and if it has an error, don't even launch your server. If you connect, you want to reuse that database connection instance because it has a variety of ways of sharing that in something called a pool or a pool of connections. So it allows your server to scale. You're supposed to connect first to Mongo. Once you're good, store that database connection there and let other people use it and let it internally deal with many, many connections more than one. We have to remove this away. The challenge with this from a testing perspective. So let's go ahead and make a pure function first to verify that we can actually connect to it. Connect to Mongo and we'll pass two things, which is the Mongo client, which is what's required here. So the Mongo client, and the second is the URL, where is your database running? So we've got a function, and we're gonna paste the contents of that, and we're gonna change this to clients, and change this to URL. Now the issue is, is that we don't know if it works. If we wanna create pure functions that are easily testable and more predictable in production, we have to return a maybe. So let's go ahead and return a new promise here say maybe if Mongo is in fact running and it's ready to go, then yes, sure, we connected successfully. Otherwise, no, here's an error and we failed. Good news, inside of the promise here is a safe zone. You can throw to your heart's content or other things can throw and the promise will catch it. Ensured most purity inside of here. We have our client we pass in, which is gonna be a Mongo client. We have our URL. So let's remove all the stuff that deals with the actual server responses. We're just interested in Connect to Mongo, let us know if we worked. If we didn't, let us know that we failed. If we did connect, go ahead and give us that connected DB instance. We're gonna call failure with an error. Otherwise, following the node callbacks of error, something went wrong, no error, we're gonna go. We'll call success with the connected DB instance. And that's it. We don't need to deal with any of this Restify stuff or collections collection searching, we're just trying to connect to a DB instance. We've wrapped connect to Mongo with a maybe. It could work or not, we're dealing with IO. Again, this is yet another input output thing, something out of our control. So the only way to return a pure function is to return a maybe, in this case, a promise. So let's go ahead and test this. Now this is gonna be the first time that you've tested something that requires massive IO. So we're gonna create something called a mock. And a mock, unlike a fixture, is something a little bit more. A fixture is usually just data, but in our case, a mock actually kind of works like the real thing. So if you were to mock the file system, for example, you'd say, sure, I wrote a file. And if you read a file from disk, sure, I read a file, but you really just return stuff. Again, this is not an integration test. This is just, does the function work by itself in a controlled environment very quickly? Should work if Mongo, we're up. To make this work in a controlled environment, we have to mock or quote unquote fake Mongo. So let's go ahead and create our first mock. There are two ways to do it. You can create them manually, or you can use a framework called, if you're a Yankee, Shinon, or if you're a Southerner, Sinon. So I'm gonna say Sinon, because thankfully we're in Virginia and we speak right. So we'll say const mock good Mongo client. Now the reason I say good is that good is gonna report success and bad is gonna report failure. And we're gonna force it to do that. While fixture is created in a fixed environment to be the exact data you want, good or bad, a good mock is created in a controlled environment to respond in a good way. And a bad is created in such a way to force a failure. So a mock in most things in JavaScript is an object. If you look up here at Mongo client, it has a ton of code if you were to actually dig into this code base and see all this crazy stuff. Good news is mocks only have to make work the minimal amount of requirements to make the, the unit test pass. What, what do we need to make it pass? Well, it's gotta be an object. An object has things called dot properties. This connect is a function, so we can create our own connect function. Okay, that wasn't so hard. And it takes a URL. Sure, we, can, we don't have to do this. This isn't TypeScript, but sure, we have a URL. The second parameter is a callback, okay. Callback function, sounds good. And eventually, it'll either call success or failure. If it's a failure, it'll pass an error as the first parameter. Otherwise, it'll pass nothing for the first parameter and a connected DB instance for the second. This doesn't do anything with that instance to verify it's DB or an instance, or if it's connected, it just passes it along. To fulfill that unit test contract with the mock, we can basically say, okay, callback, uh, nothing, 
it works, bro, undefined. And sure, here's a Deviant instance. <laughs> it's an object. It's yet another fixture. Cool, that is our mock. Return, connect to Mongo using our mock client, not our real client, Mongo good client. Some URL, then it should work. Because again, we don't do anything with the URL, we just pass it in. This should be fulfilled. It should call the then. So if you run NPM test, Scroll down, it should work if Mongo up. Cool. What happens if it fails? Well, if Mongo is not there or something blows up, it gives us an error and it should report a failure. So let's go ahead and create a, a bad mock and verify that it fails. Should fail if Mongo is not there or has some weird error. So we'll say mock bad Mongo client, and we're gonna hard code this mock to call an error. So same exact thing, it's an object with a connect function, and it gets a URL and callbacks, so same function signature, but it actually calls the callback with an error for the first parameter. So we'll say new error, boom. Mongo is not working, oh no. And we'll pass in nothing for the second parameter because we don't care. And that's it. We now have a mock for the bad Mongo client. Return. Connect to Mongo. Mock bad Mongo client. And I guess second parameter is some URL. Should be rejected because the Mongo mock is going to say, I blew up. I can't connect to Mongo. So if we rerun our unit tests, cool, it should fail. So we know that if we pass in a fake Mongo client and say, yeah, dude, you're connected, then connect to Mongo reports good and it actually gives you this object back. Same thing if you verify that Mongo always fails and you test that it always fails, then you now know that this connect to Mongo function is extremely reliable on a mock. We can do some integration tests with it later. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a quick intro to creating mocks. Emulate a real, actual client or Mongo client or really any implementation of a big old complicated class. And we just pass it in and mock it and pretend to fulfill either did it work or not. So when we start to implement this function and many other functions inside of other places where they're using real clients, we know that they're tested very well and functioning very predictably. But we still fulfilled quick, fast unit test using mocks.